and my first check just came in. I'm too hype. Oh, you gonna give me some? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, if you're not gonna show it me, at least give 10% to the Lord. Do you know how to do that? Yeah, just follow the directions. Down below. Down below. <laughs> What up? Next Level Ministry. I'm excited to be a part of it. This is Jonathan Evans. I'm stepping in to speak to you guys today. So listen, just can't wait for this time that we're getting in together so that we can get it in. Because really, in this life, we want to learn, grow, and achieve. You know, my dad always told me that life is like a dollar bill. You get to have it, but you're only going to get to spend it once. So you need to spend it well. And so we don't want to waste any time. Let me start out with a word of prayer. and We're just going to jump in. Heavenly Father, we love you and honor you. We give you the praise and glory for who you are. If you don't do anything else, you've already done enough by giving us your son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for our sins. Help us to not just believe in it. That's the starting point, but help us to walk in it. We love you and honor you in Jesus name. Amen. So glad to be with you today, but I want to take you straight into it. So let's jump into Psalm 128. So if you got your Bibles, open them up. If you got your, your phones, uh, open up the Bible app, turn it to Psalm 128 and let's jump right in. I got my Bible with me. So I'm going to read you Psalm 128. OK, this is something that my dad, for many of you know, my dad, Dr. Tony Evans, uh, from wherever you're watching, we're here in Dallas. And so uh, that's where the church is. That's where Next Level Youth Ministry is. And that's where Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship is. So um, let me just read this to you. How blessed is everyone who fears the Lord. Psalm 128, verse one. All right. How blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in his ways. You shall eat the fruit of your hands. You will be happy and it will go well with you. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine within your house. Your children like olive plants around your table. Behold, thus shall the man be blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see prosperity in Jerusalem all the days of your life. Indeed, may you see your children's children. Peace be upon Israel. Now, I know you heard some things in there. You're like, man, you're talking about wives. You're talking about seeing your children's children. Yo, we just youth. But I learned this when I was six years old. My dad taught me this at the table when I was six and he wanted me to memorize it. And I'm like, yo, I'm six. Like you want me to memorize, first of all, this whole chapter, which is six verses. But when I'm six, I'm like, that's too many verses for me. But I memorized it and I got it down because he wanted me to start early when it came to my legacy. He wanted me to start early when it came to the life that he knew that I would want to live and lead in my life. He didn't want me to wait till later because later may never come. He wanted me to have the right mindset now so that I can move forward in what God is calling me to do and not be blocked by a mindset of the culture that's not going to be the one who gives me a legacy. Right here, Jesus, God, he's the one who gives us the legacy. He's the one who can give you um, where you can look back on your life and see that you built something that was worth something. Not just for the earth's kingdom, not just for the culture's kingdom, but for his kingdom. Because the reality is, guys, that when all of this is said and done, when the game actually comes to an end, which all games do, when, when, when life is over, you want to know that when you see God, that you built for his kingdom, not just for your kingdom, because he's the one who grades the paper. He's the one who grades how you played, how you rolled, how you lived. He's the one who's going to be able to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. Now I'm going to make you ruler over many things. He's the one who gives promises. He's the one who gives blessings. And so we want to make sure that we're walking this thing out the way that he calls us to walk it out and that we're looking ahead. Sometimes you have to have vision and look ahead a little bit further than you can see. And that's what this passage does. Psalm 128 just simply starts by saying how blessed is everyone who fears the Lord and who walks in his ways. To fear God means to take him seriously, not to take him casually. How do you know whether or not you fear God? Well, the verse tells you if you walk in his ways. That's how he knows whether you fear him. It's not by your talk, it's by your walk. It's not by your articulations, it's by your actions. 
A lot of people talk a good game, but they can't play a good game. God wants to know that you're really on his side, not just um, living a life behind his back. Because a lot of people who go to church or who listen to the videos, who hear what the pastor has to say, don't want to do what they've heard. Um, that's why the book of James talks about, don't just be a hearer of the word, but be a liver of the word, be a doer of the word so that you don't delude yourself. Have you ever um, drank like a diluted soda, like a, a Sprite or a Coke that was diluted? In other words, it had lost its fizz. You know what I mean? You, sh you shook it or something happened to it or it was left out too long and you took a sip of it and you spit that thing out because you're like, man, this is diluted. It had totally lost its fizz. Well, you know that soda is supposed to have fizz in it. So you know if it loses its fizz and it's diluted, something's wrong with it. And a lot of Christians have been sitting too long. They're not moving and walking in his ways, they're just sitting. And while they know that they're supposed to be a certain ingredient, they know that they're supposed to have a lot of fizz as a Christian, they know that they're supposed to be walking this thing out. They have no fizz, they're totally diluted. And what does it say about lukewarm? It says that God will spit you out of his mouth, just like we spit out a diluted soda, because we know that that soda is supposed to have fizz. And what God is saying is that your life is supposed to have fizz. Like I know if you fear me, if you actually have fizz, like if you're actually walking this thing out, not if you're sitting still being stale, but if you're actually living the life that I've called you to live, that's how I know if you fear me. And it says how blessed is everyone who fears the Lord. So we want a blessing, but the blessing comes from fearing God. But how do you know if you fear God? If you walk in his ways, if you actually still have that fizz, if you're not deluded, if you're not just hearing it, but you're actually living it. Now, we do this in every area of my life. What if I told you I was a basketball player, but I didn't play basketball? What if I told you I was a football player, but I didn't play football? What if you what if I told you I was a violinist, but I didn't play the violin? What if what if I told you um, that I was, you know what I'm saying? Uh, well, I'm about to say cheerleader. I'm not a cheerleader. But what if, uh, you know, somebody told you they were a cheerleader? You know what I mean? And they never cheered. I mean, what if what if somebody told you that they were great at academics, but they never studied? Obviously, that wouldn't make any sense. Obviously, we say, bro, like you're tripping. How, why do you keep saying you're this, but you're not that? Well, why do you keep saying that you're this type of person, but you never practice? Like, why do you keep saying that this is what you do, but I never see you do it? God is saying the same thing. Why do you keep saying you're a Christian, but you don't do it? Like, why do you keep saying you wear the uniform of Jesus Christ, but I never see you put it on? Like, why do you keep saying that this is the life that you say that you're connected to, but you're totally disconnected? Like, see, we don't do that in any er any other area in life. We don't do that. There's no other area in life where we say we do something, but we never do it. Like you would look at somebody and say, bro, you are tripping. Like this makes no sense. Like I can't even hang out with you because I know that you're not who you really say you are. Like, but we want to be blessed by God, even though we say we're one thing, but we never do it. So we want God to hang out with us. We want God to be cool with us. We want God. We want to have a close relationship with God, but we never do what we say we are. Well, we don't do that in normal life. So if we're not you know, crazy enough to connect with somebody who says one thing but does another thing, then why would we expect God to be you know, any less than us in hanging out with us and blessing us if we're not doing what we say we do? I mean, it's simple logic. It's simple logic that we carry in our lives, but we expect something different from God. And God is saying, no, don't expect anything different. How blessed is everyone who fears the Lord and who walks in my ways. I mean, whatever you expect, I expect. But God expects it on a whole nother level because he's God. And he's saying the same thing you're saying. Hey, if you're my dude and this is what you say, this is what I want to see you do. And God is saying, hey, if you're my person and this is what you say, this is what I want to see you do. And then I can get a, give you a blessing. Now, you may be thinking, hold up, Jay. Like, listen, um, I've seen a lot of people who are blessed that don't fear God. I see a lot of people who are blessed, you know what I'm saying, that live any old kind of way. I see a lot of people who are blessed that got fans, followers, um, they social media, they got plenty of views, they got money, they got a house, they rolling, they, they in the rap game, they in the music game, they doing these things, they got all of this, you know, blah, blah, blah. So I, I see all of that. I see a lot of people being blessed. Well, that's the confusing thing. Let me straighten it out for you. God is not the only one who blesses. See, people don't realize that Satan blesses. In Matthew chapter four, when Jesus was being tempted in the wilderness by the devil, go read Matthew chapter four. Jesus was being tempted in the wilderness by the devil. And the devil says, I'll give you the kingdoms of this world if you bow down and worship me. So the devil tried to bless Jesus. 
The devil did the same thing to Adam and Eve. He said, if you eat this fruit, you're going to be like God. So he tries to bless you, but he wants to bless you so that you can serve him. If you're going to serve him, if you're going to live for his kingdom, he's going to do the same thing that God would do to bless you for his kingdom. You see, there's two kingdoms at war. We already know which one is going to win. The question is, which one do you work for? That's the one that will bless you. But a lot of people are blessed by the enemy and then they'll get up on the stage and thank God. Mm -mm. God only blesses in connection with his kingdom. God is not blessing. It's like having uh, an employer. You go get a job at, at Subway, but you're spending all of your hours at Jersey Mike's. So you're spending all your hours at Jersey Mike's, but you work. You say you work at Subway. Well, the owner of Subway is not going to write you a check. Why would the owner of Subway write you a check? The owner of Subway is not going to write you a check. You know why? Because you're spending all your time at Jersey Mike's. You know who's going to write you a check? Jersey Mike's. Now, you may say you work at Subway, but Jersey Mike is going to write you a check. Why? Because that's where you're spending all of your time. So you're still getting a check, but you're not getting a check from who you say you work for. See, there's a lot of people who work for the enemy. Therefore, they're paid by the enemy. But they say they're a Christian, but they're not getting their paycheck from God because God is not going to bless you for working for the enemy. That's where you work. That's where you're going to get paid. So a lot of people are getting blessed, but they don't understand who they're being blessed by. But you know you're being blessed by God. Why? Because you walk in his ways and the things that are coming to you are not a uh, encumbrance to you or they're not cumbersome to you. Proverbs 10, says it this way. When God blesses, there is no sorrow with it. So you got a lot of people who got a lot of blessings, but they also have a lot of sorrow. Because when the enemy blesses, he can't keep the sorrow from you. Now, he can give you a lot of house, but he can't give you a home. He can give you a lot of money, but he can't tell you how to use it to where it's not becoming more of a burden on you. He, you know, he can give you a lot of followers, but he can't stop them from becoming your trolls. So you got to understand how this really works. He says, how blessed is everyone who fears the Lord and who walks in his ways. So God wants to write the check. God wants the one be the one to bless you. And let me tell you what the check is that he wants to write. It says it in Psalm 128. He says that you will eat the fruit of your hands. You will be happy and it will go well with you. In other words, eating the fruit of your hands is your fortune. God is like, man, I got your fortune. I got it. Okay, I'll take care of your fortune. Then he says, you will be happy. That's your feelings. God is like, I'll bless you with the fortune. I'll bless you with the with the happiness. That's the feeling. And he says, it will go well with you. Well, that's your future. So I'm going to take care of your fortune. I'm going to take care of your feelings and I'm going to take care of your future. So you're running around in circles trying to take care of your own fortune, trying to take care of your own feelings and trying to take care of your own future. God is saying, if you just walk in my ways, I will take care of your fortune. I will take care of your feelings and I'll take care of your future. You don't have to do that. You don't have to run around in circles and do the dance to try to get people to watch your YouTube, uh, subscribe to your YouTube and try to get all the people to follow you and try to do all of these different things that you got to try to keep up with to try to keep the followers going, to try to keep the views going. And you don't even know if those people like you, respect you, won't turn on you. It don't even matter. You're trying to do the dance that's necessary to try to control the response that you yourself want to get in your life. And God is saying, you don't have to do that. If you fear me, I'll take care of your fortune. I'll take care of your feelings and I'll take care of your future. See, God just describes the blessing he wants to give to those who are willing to fear him, to those who are willing to say, not only am I signing on to Jesus Christ, not only am I subscribing to Jesus Christ, I'm actually living for Jesus Christ. And he says, I will take care of you. I got it. OK, but then he moves and he, he goes to the family. So I want you to see further than where you are right now, because he says your wife shall be like a fruitful vine, your children like olive plants around your table. Now, you're not there yet. None of you are there yet. You if you're a youth, you maybe watch with your parents who are there. But if you're a youth, you're not there yet. But he's trying to my dad taught me this at six. He's trying to get you to see down the road. Because me, most people say, hey, just live in the moment. Yeah. But if you if you don't make the right decisions in the moment, it'll tear your future apart. So you want to live in the moment, but you want to consider your future. You want to think about because every decision now dictate the life that you lead later. And a lot of people don't think about later. So they make decisions now. And when they get to later, they, they wish they could change the now that they used to be in. I hope you followed that. I hope you stay. I almost confused myself on that one. But but understand that a lot of times when you get to the future, OK, you look back on yesterday and you wish you could change it. 
But you can't change it because now you're in the future. But what you can do is make the right decisions now. And he's saying, I want you to see the future. I want you to understand that one day there's going to be a family. That your wife shall be like a fruitful vine. That means that the wife has a husband and they're growing together. Okay, a fruitful vine has to do with things being fruitful, things being plentiful, things um, 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 having good taste. Okay, that you'll have that and then you'll have children who will be like olive plants around your table. Okay, and that's where you are right now, around your parents' table, or you know what I'm saying? You're, you're, you're growing. It says olive plant, and it takes 15 years for an olive plant to become an olive tree. Okay, but once an olive plant becomes an olive tree, it can pump out olives for 2,000 years. Why? Because the roots run deep. Right now, you want to take this opportunity to set your roots. Because if you set your roots in God's word, if you sit at the table and you listen to your parents and you're trying to learn, you're trying to grow, you're asking questions. This is the time to ask questions. They've already been a teenager. They've already done it. This is the time to ask questions. And I know you think it's different, but the Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. Everything is the same. It just morphs. Trust me. Ask questions. Learn. Set your roots deep so that you can pump out fruitfulness for years and years and years and years and years to come. So it's talking about where you are now, but it's talking about your family later. You want to be able to set roots so that you can actually teach your kids something. Why? Because God is thinking about your legacy. He wants to bless you. He wants to bless your children. He wants to bless your children's children. And when I was in high school, I wasn't thinking about legacy. I was like, I'm not thinking about that, but I am now. And there are some things I wish I would have done yesterday to fix some things that I'm dealing with today. Because every decision you make dictates the life that you lead. But now I'm teaching my kids. And I never would have thought that when I was in high school, I would be 39 years old looking at five kids. I got five kids, 12, 10, seven, uh, let's see, seven, five, and two. And it's hard to keep up with all of them. So I'm working on that. But trust me, it happens. It's like all of a sudden you got people that are now depending on the decisions that I made back then. They didn't exist back then, but now they are benefiting from the decisions I made back then. See, there are people depending on you that aren't even here yet. You don't know them. You don't know their names, but they're depending on you. They're depending on the decisions that you make now to determine what kind of upbringing they get to have later. I didn't think about that. But my dad wanted me to think about that. My mom wanted me to think about that when they saw when they taught me Psalm 128. They wanted me to see further than where I was. I want you to think about that. Then he says, may you be blessed from Zion. So he starts with the individual fearing God. You work for God. Let me see. OK, I'll bless you if you do. If you work for me like any employer, I'll give you your fortune, feelings and future. I'll pay you because you work. You're working for the kingdom. Don't work for this kingdom and try to get paid from this kingdom. It don't work like that. OK, I'm going to set your family up. If you fear me, I'm going to take care of you now. I'm going to set your roots so that later when the people show up who are here now, they get to benefit from the decisions that you're making right now. And then he says, I'm going to bless you from Zion. What's Zion? Zion is the temple of God. In Psalm 128, it's the temple of God. So he's saying, I'm going to bless you from Zion. There are certain blessings that God will give you in community that he won't give you by yourself. There are certain things that God will do for you when you're connected to the body of Christ and when you're connected to a church that he's not going to do for you by yourself. It's like the HOV lane. Many of you, uh, I don't know where you're at right now, but in Dallas, we got the HOV lane. That's like this separate lane that's in the middle of the highway that you can drive on. It's on the freeway, but it's off the freeway. Like it gets the benefits of the freeway, but it's kind of off to the left by itself. And so you can only get in the HOV lane if you're riding with somebody else. If you're riding solo, you got to stay on the freeway. So if there's a wreck on the freeway, if, you know, there's traffic on the freeway, there's construction on the freeway, you're going to be stuck in traffic on the freeway. But if you're riding with somebody else, you can skip the traffic and get in the HOV lane. It's just a one lane, one way freeway for people who are riding with other people going in the same direction towards downtown Dallas. God is saying, I want to bless you from Zion. In other words, I want to bless you in community. I got this HOV lane blessing that comes in community that you don't get by yourself. So you and I got it, man, bro. I can do this by myself. I got it. I don't need nobody's help. I got it. I got it. I got it. And God is saying, man, I got these blessings that I'm holding in my hand. 
that I'm not going to give you disconnected from your youth group. I'm not going to give you disconnected from those who are trying to go to downtown God, trying to go to downtown uh, wherever you at, trying to go to downtown uh, relationship with Jesus Christ. I'm not I mean, unless y'all riding together to downtown God, downtown Jesus Christ, downtown cross. There are just some blessings that I'll just hold back. Because they come, may the Lord bless you from Zion. That's what it says. And so he's talking to you as an individual. He's saying, I'm going to bless you if you're rolling with me, just like you do with your friends. You don't bless people that ain't rolling with you. Why would we ask God to do the same? I'm going to take care of your future, your feelings, and your fortune. I'm going to take care of your future family. Make decisions now. I'm going to bless you in connection, in community. And then he goes further. He says, may you see prosperity in Jerusalem. Indeed, watch this. May you see your children's children. He really talking legacy now. I know y'all like, man, I ain't nowhere close. To, I ain't nowhere close to children, let alone children's children. We're looking further than we can see. Because if you're not only thinking about your children in the future, but you're thinking about your children's children, what kind of dynasty do you want to have? I like that word. What do you want your dynasty to be? When you're able to look out when you're old, you ain't young no more, and you look out and you see a dynasty of people who are successful, people who love the Lord, people who made it out, people who can say, hey, granddad, great grandma, Mimi, Papa, whatever you want to be called in. And you got this long table and you can call it a dynasty. Not this weak, whimpery legacy where you look out your window and no one's there because you were selfish. You didn't live for God. You were just living for yourself. And the enemy gets to say, thanks. You did nothing for God. You did a whole lot for me. And it produced nothing. But I appreciate it. Or you can live for God who says, I want to give you a dynasty. Which one do you want? You can bring, you can, you yourself can bring peace to a whole nation because it starts with one person. Then it moves to the family. Then it moves to the church. Then it moves to the city. Then it moves to the whole country, starting from one person. How blessed is everyone who fears the Lord? from one person to a dynasty. All depends on what you want. It could be your legacy. All right, let's go. That's the word for today. Thank you for having me as a part of Next Level. Everybody who's watching, bless you and go get that dynasty. God wants it for you. We really hope you enjoyed our service today. Remember to turn in those sermon notes. And don't forget to watch Dr. Tony Evans every Sunday at 10 a.m. on Facebook and YouTube.